Do you have not enough disease? What exactly is not enough disease? You are the professing believer who's never settled, who's never comfortable in your Christian sin. You are perpetually examining and you never feel a sense of shalom. Shalom is a, is a word that is a very large and all-encompassing word. And in essence, it means this, a wish for completeness or a wish for contentment or a wish for fulfillment or satisfaction or blessing. In other words, it is a desire that all that is good would flow into your life. And that's what Jewish people meant and still mean when they say shalom. They don't mean, I hope you stop fighting with your wife. They mean, I wish for you all that is good, all that is blessed, all that brings satisfaction, fulfillment, completeness, and contentment. Now, the question that confronts each of us when we go about the business of diagnosing the peculiar malady of not enough disease, there is a reality. You might not be doing those things enough. And yet that does not mean that you are not actually a believer. Do you feel the tension here? Do you see how difficult it is to correctly diagnose, give a correct prognosis, and then give an actual cure to this malady? You get discouraged, you get upset, you get frustrated. Why? Because you're looking at yourself. That is not what faith is about. Faith is about saying, what is God? What has he promised? He's a rewarder. He's given promises of reward if we will come to him. Why does it seem we have more people these days in evangelical Christianity that are suffering from this peculiar malady? I would like to suggest to you, it is because we have some preachers, good brothers, who are very concerned about another malady. Not enough true converts. These are the men who look around the landscape of evangelical Christianity and they see many people who raise their hands during worship and yet they leave the darkened building and they don't really act like Christians, which could lead to the conclusion they're not actually a Christian. There is a balance and the balance is this. Salvation only comes through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. How do we know then that we have this faith in Jesus Christ? Well, there is an inner witness of the Spirit of God in which God gives us peace. God testifies to our heart that we have become the children of God. Not enough self-examination. Not enough preaching that encourages somebody to make sure that your calling and election is sure. Not enough preaching that is fiery, that has brimstone, that has lots of law. Make no mistake about it. Those things are good and they are right. But is it possible that evangelicals have correctly diagnosed a problem? that there's not enough true converts, and they've taken a valid concern and turned it into a hyper concern. What is the hyper concern? Hey, there's so many false converts out there. I better not preach about assurance and abiding in Christ because I don't want to give any of those false converts false assurance. Yeah, the problem is complicated because we have four kinds of people. The people who aren't saved and know that they aren't saved. The people who aren't saved and don't know that they aren't saved. People who are saved and know that they're saved. And people who are unsaved who know that they are saved. That's where the problem comes in. Is it a genuine concern that there are false converts, that there are tares among the wheat, that there are rotten fish with the good fish? Absolutely, positively. But that does not mean we should whiplash into another ditch and never preach about abiding in Christ. If it is true on the one hand that tough self-examination preaching cannot get somebody lost, then it must be true that exalting preaching of the gospel of grace, it can't get a true convert to act like a false convert. And so that is what we are going to do for you if you happen to be a not enough Christian. You are never experiencing a peace that surpasses all understanding because you're always worried 
you're not doing enough. He justified us and he did so in a way that was alien to us. He did so in a way that had nothing to do with you. He did not justify you because of you. He justified you in spite of you. It's grace. You are not hearing enough Romans 8 preaching. You see Paul diagnosing himself in Romans chapter 7, recognizing I'm not doing enough. I'm not obeying enough and I'm sinning too much. What a wretched man I am. Who will save me from this body of death? Do you feel the pain and suffering that comes from not enough disease? In the original Greek in which Paul wrote this, he uses the compound word for no. It's not just no, it's no. It is a very strong word. And so Paul is affirming that there is no condemnation. And to emphasize it even further, the word no is the first word in the sentence in the original Greek language. So this literally reads out of the original language, no therefore condemnation, to emphasize no. So Paul is coming down hard on this reality that there is absolutely no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Christian, have you not been hearing that you cannot get lost? That your behavior can't keep you? That you're striving for perfection? It doesn't enhance your standing with God one iota, that there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, including not enough fill in the blank. Right now, I can hear some people saying, look at that, another one bites the dust. A formerly conservative preacher now talking about the love of God that is in Christ Jesus and that when he saves us, he keeps us even while we are sinning. This is not liberal theology. This is biblical truth. Christians, you're gonna sin. No, you shouldn't enjoy it. No, you shouldn't be passive about it. But no, you're not condemned when you do. Should God always be on our brain? Of course he should. But that doesn't mean we are constantly mindful of his presence in everything that we're doing. It, it's, it's not biblical and it's simply not a reality. Loudly and clearly, we should be thinking about the Lord during the day. We should be mindful of his commands. We should be remembering his statutes. We should realize that his word, it's the sweetest thing that we can contemplate. But even as we're going about our daily lives and our business, doing our thing, raising our kids, running for the groceries, if we're not thinking about the gospel in that moment, it doesn't mean you're not a child of God. In the Bible, we can see that it is God's will that people have assurance. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, John gives us the reason why he writes this letter. He says, These things I have written to you, who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know, you may have the assurance that you have eternal life. It is God's desire that every true believer have assurance of salvation. There is the solution for your not enough disease problem. If you are constantly keeping lists to make sure you're doing enough to demonstrate that you are a Christian, let me introduce you perhaps to the doctrine of adoption. Do you go about the business of doing things for your parents to make sure you stay in the family? No, you just are. You know that you're in the family and that is what you need to know about God. If you have repented and put your trust in his beloved son, you are in the family. You can't do anything to get in. You can't do anything to get out. You 
are adopted. We have been adopted. We have every right to cry, Abba, Father. And since we are children, and that is a reality, that is a fulfilled condition, we are then heirs. We are heirs. Galatians 3.26 says, You are all sons of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You're not a son of God by being born into the world. You're a son of God and an heir by faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3.26. And if you are a son and a child of God, you are then an heir also. You have not been diligent in applying fertilizer, the means of growth that God has for you. Reading your Bible and praying and going to church, correct it. Stop doing the wrong thing. Start doing the right thing. But that doesn't mean that you are not adopted. It means you're perhaps being a naughty child or a lazy child, but you are still his child. If you've been lazy, neglecting the means of growth, then stop it. Ask God to help you do better. Repent if you've been sinning, and then thank him for being gracious to forgive you of your sins, cleanse you of all unrighteousness, and keep you as an adopted child of your father. I'll be needing to see some identification, young man. Why? Because you, my friend, are a lawbreaker. No, I'm not. You are, according to this video from Ray Comfort. Production, I need the clips on time. <laughs> What's your emergency? We met up. Yeah, he asked me this. to become a gospel partner and he took my credit card. 